Hi everybody, um, and in this short video I'd just like to talk about failure as feedback. I think sometimes we see failure as a very bad thing and in some, in some cases failure can be, but in, certainly when we're talking in terms of lifestyle change, we maybe need to start taking a different look at it. Now when I first start work with a client, I will always talk to them about relapse. If you look at the model for change from Prochatska and Di Clementi, it has various stages that you're going to go around on your way to making a lifestyle change. But a key component of that lifestyle change is going to be relapse. And because this is so widely researched across lots of addictive behaviours, you can be fairly confident that relapse is undoubtedly part of the failure. Uh, sorry, undoubtedly part of the kind of overall system of change. Now, you can either ignore that and just get on with making your change, or you can address it early on. And the thing about relapse is when you look at the little depictions of it, the drawings, diagrams, things like that, although at any one point you might be in action, so you're kind of moving ahead with your behavior change, whether that be going to the gym regularly or improving your nutrition, at any point in that process, you can have a relapse and the problem with it sometimes is you will relapse all the way back as far as pre-contemplation and to reiterate pre-contemplation means you're no longer thinking about the change so you have a particularly bad day it all goes wrong you catastrophize it and you think oh i'm having the wine i'm gonna have my chocolate chocolate's healthy for me anyway and the diet doesn't really matter and so you just kind of give up on it totally now, part of the problem there is you didn't plan for the relapse. And so in the blog article that I've just written that this video is kind of accompanying, I wanted to talk a little bit about planning for it and also kind of being realistic. One of the things that you'll find with any diet book, and you could go out and find a diet book now or even look in a magazine and look at the latest diet fad. And that diet, I can almost guarantee, will always say, this is going to be dead easy to follow. The weight's going to fall off. You're going to feel great. You'll never feel hungry. You'll be able to include all your favorite foods. Pretty much those lines are nearly always in the first chapter. And that's okay to a degree. But the problem is it's setting up an unrealistic model. You are now reading all that thinking, all oh, right, yeah, that's going to be great. The way, And for the first few weeks, it may well go really well. The weight may fall off. You might not feel hungry and so on. So it's all going swimmingly, as it were. Now, however, a few weeks in, real life starts to get in the way. And you maybe drop this change and you drop that little change. And then you have a really bad day at work or the kids play up at home or something goes wrong. And you think, oh, sod it, this is all too much work. Um, I'll go back to doing what I normally did. I'll have some chocolate, I'm going to have a beer. I need to celebrate, I need to relax, whatever it might be. And so that relapse has occurred. Now, if the diet book was being honest, or the, the actual diet page, if it's in a magazine, the second chapter should actually say, most people won't stick with this. Most people will go back to their old lifestyle. And most people will put the weight back on plus a bit as well. Because that's the truth of the matter. So if we had that second chapter, we maybe wouldn't feel so bad when we had the failure. And, and the reason that failure feels so bad, that relapse feels so catastrophic is, part of the problem is you're comparing yourself to an unrealistic model. In other words, most people can't stick at this, and for most people this isn't going to work. But you've looked at it from the perspective of, well, it was in a book and they say thousands of people have lost weight this way and it's been really brilliant for them. And then you'll hear, often when people have failed at something like this, whether it be a diet, whether it be an exercise regime, you'll hear things like, oh, it, oh I just didn't have the willpower, I couldn't stick at it. Or, oh, it, it didn't really work for me, this happened and that happened. So th there'll be a number of excuses, if you like, uh, as to why it hasn't worked and an excuse typically excuses you from taking an action that's kind of what the word means so that's the first thing we're looking at unrealistic models sometimes gyms are a bit guilty of this they'll have a wall that says kind of trainer of the week the person that's managed to get in the most or loser of the week they've lost the most kind of weight in the, in the last month or they completed the marathon or whatever and I haven't got a problem with having that success wall 
But if you're going to have the success wall, you also need four walls that show all the people that didn't get in, that aren't coming to the gym regularly and haven't met their goals. Because now we're being realistic. And now at least when you're looking at it, you're seeing the successes and actually you're seeing they're a little bit of an anomaly. Those are the people that kind of, they're a little bit different to the the majority of the population. So there is no doubt about it, change is difficult. And so successful lifestyle change requires a lot of planning. And a key part of that planning is actually planning for failure. And I know that might sound like a weird thing to say, but if we know that it's part of the process, then if we plan for it, when it does happen, it's not so much of a catastrophe. So what I will say to clients is, look, if you have a really bad day and you feel it's all gone wrong, at the end of the day, just sit down, go back through the day and think, okay, why did I feel like that? What could I have perhaps done better? What have I learned from this? So as next time it happens, I can move on. And then you kind of wipe the slate clean and crack on. Now you're using that failure as feedback. You're learning from us from it. If you look at anyone that's successful in business, in life, in in sport, whatever, they will all have failed at some time. The difference is they've got back up, they've dusted themselves off, and they've learned from the failure, as opposed to, oh, I failed, I'm giving up. And so that's my kind of key message here. Failure or relapse, whichever way you want to look at it is, is part of the process. And when you first start any type of behavior change, generally you're going to be very confident about, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. This is going to be the one. That is the time to plan for the failure when you're super confident. You might not want to talk about it. Oh no, it's not going to happen this time. It'll all be fine. But actually, if you plan for it at this point, when it does ultimately happen, and as I say, it will happen, you'll be able to deal with it. You'll be able to move on and it'll be a valuable experience for you. If you look at the research around smoking cessation, Protasca and De Clementi have found over years of research that the average person that stops smoking on average needs five or six attempts before they're actually successful at stopping. And what each of those attempts is doing, it's giving them a whole new skill set to cope next time. And so just think of your relapse, your failure, whatever, as a learning experience. It's going to give me a whole bunch of new skills, which means that moving forward, I'm going to be so much better at this. And kind of build yourself up. Look at the realistic model. Remember, everybody fails. It's how they deal with the failure that is the key thing here. So I hope that's been useful for you. And I look forward to speaking again soon.